Have you ever pondered the perplexing question, why doesn't a light bulb, or any heated object for that matter, emit infinite energy? This conundrum, known as the ultraviolet catastrophe, baffled scientists at the turn of the 20th century. But don't worry, they've since solved it. Let's dive into the heart of this fascinating phenomenon. To understand the ultraviolet catastrophe, we first need to appreciate the concept of black body radiation. A black body is a hypothetical object that absorbs all light and radiation that comes its way, reflecting nothing. When heated, this black body begins to radiate energy. Theorists of the late 19th century, using classical physics, predicted that the energy emitted by a black body should increase without limit as the frequency of light increases. This means that a black body heated to a particular temperature would emit an infinite amount of high-frequency ultraviolet light. Hence, the term ultraviolet catastrophe. But here's the catch. This prediction contradicts everyday observations. When you heat a piece of iron in a fire, it starts to glow red, then white as it gets hotter, but it never starts emitting ultraviolet light. So clearly the classical physics prediction was wrong, but why? Enter quantum mechanics, the hero of our story. Quantum mechanics fundamentally changed our understanding of the universe. The revolutionary idea that energy is not continuous, but comes in discrete packets or quanta, solved the ultraviolet catastrophe. Max Planck, a German theoretical physicist, was the first to challenge the classical physics prediction. He proposed that the energy of light is quantized, meaning it can only take on certain values. Each of these values corresponds to a different frequency of light, with higher frequencies corresponding to higher energy quanta. This idea, was a radical departure from the continuous energy changes predicted by classical physics. Planck's theory meant that high-frequency, high-energy light could only be emitted if the black body had enough energy to begin with. This put a natural limit on the amount of ultraviolet light a heated object could emit, avoiding the predicted catastrophe. Planck's work laid the groundwork for the development of quantum mechanics and earned him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918. So. To summarize, the ultraviolet catastrophe was a prediction of classical physics that heated objects should emit infinite amounts of high-frequency light. This obviously didn't match up with reality and left scientists scratching their heads. The problem was solved by Max Planck, who proposed that energy is quantized. This idea, a cornerstone of quantum mechanics, put a limit on the energy a heated object could emit, thus avoiding the catastrophe. This fascinating tale of the ultraviolet catastrophe reveals how our understanding of the universe can be turned on its head, leading to new and exciting theories. It's a testament to the ever-evolving nature of science and the power of a good question to drive progress. So, next time you look at a light bulb, remember the ultraviolet catastrophe and the quantum revolution it sparked. What if the universe in all its vast complexity operates on a system of tiny, indivisible units? This is the intriguing proposition posited by Max Planck the father of quantum physics. Planck's theory of quanta was a groundbreaking shift in the world of physics. Let's take a moment to truly appreciate this revolutionary idea. It's quite simple, really. Planck proposed that energy, instead of flowing in a continuous unbroken stream, is actually transmitted in discrete packets. These packets, or quanta, are the smallest possible units of energy and cannot be further subdivided. Imagine a line of dominoes falling. It's tempting to see the dominoes as a continuous flow of movement, but in actuality each domino falls individually. Each domino is a quantum, an indivisible unit of action. And just as the dominoes transfer energy from one to the next, energy in the universe is transferred in these tiny, discrete packets. This theory completely revolutionized our understanding of the universe. It suggested that the universe operates on a digital system of sorts, with energy being transferred in distinct packets, rather than a continuous, analog flow. It's a bit like the difference between a vinyl record and a digital music file. The vinyl record has a continuous groove, while the digital file is made up of individual bits of information. But what's truly fascinating about Planck's quanta is that they are not just a theoretical concept. Scientists have actually observed these tiny packets of energy in action. When an atom absorbs or emits energy, it does so in distinct quanta. This observation has been used to develop technologies like lasers and semiconductors, 
which rely on the precise control of energy at the quantum level. So to summarize, Planck's theory of quanta proposes that energy is transmitted in discrete packets, rather than a continuous flow. These packets, or quanta, are the smallest possible units of energy, and cannot be further subdivided. This theory has revolutionized our understanding of the universe, and has been observed in action in the form of atomic energy, absorption and emission. In the grand scheme of things, the universe operates in a digital manner, with these tiny packets of energy being the fundamental building blocks. It's a mind-bending concept, but one that has shaped the very fabric of modern physics. And so, we find ourselves in a universe made up of these tiny, indivisible packets of energy. From the smallest atom to the grandest galaxy, everything operates on this system of quanta. It's a testament to the brilliance of Planck and a reminder of the fascinating complexity of our universe. Have you ever wondered how much power resides in a simple beam of light? This might sound surprising, but light is more than just the radiant glow that illuminates our world. It is an essential form of energy that holds the potential to be converted into electrical energy. This intriguing phenomenon is known as the photoelectric effect. It's not magic, it's science, and it's truly fascinating. In the next few minutes, we will unravel the mystery of the photoelectric effect. Imagine, if you will, a metal surface being hit by light. When this happens, something rather intriguing occurs. The light, if it carries enough energy, can actually knock electrons loose from the metal. This phenomenon, my friends, is known as the photoelectric effect. Let's break it down a bit further. You see, every electron within a metal is held there by a certain amount of binding energy. If the light that hits the metal surface carries sufficient energy, or, in more scientific terms, high enough frequency, it can overcome this binding energy. Once that happens, the electron is set free, and it zips away from the metal surface. That's the photoelectric effect for you. Now, you might be wondering, what happens if the light doesn't carry enough energy? Well, in that case, no matter how intense the light is, no electrons will be released. This is because the intensity of light doesn't affect the energy of its particles. It's all about the frequency or energy of the light, not its intensity. This is a fascinating insight into the behavior of light. Many of us typically think of light as a wave, but the photoelectric effect shows us that light can also behave as particles. These particles, known as photons, carry discrete amounts of energy that can knock electrons loose from a metal surface. So the photoelectric effect demonstrates that light behaves as particles, not just waves. So what have we learned about the power of light? Well, it turns out that light is far more than a mere source of illumination. It's a form of energy, a force that can be harnessed and transformed. It's a glimpse into the dual nature of light, a fundamental aspect of our universe that challenges our everyday perception. So there you have it. Light, in all its intriguing complexity, is not just for seeing, it's a source of power, a medium of transformation, 